Hey, and howdy, howdy, and hi! Welcome back to the channel, thanks for dropping by. Once again, it is time for Bunny to jump onto a trend that has long died, but she's way too slow at drawing, so here we are now. And if you're wondering what trend I'm jumping on and you somehow didn't see the thumbnail or the title of this video, we're drawing Miku. But worldwide. See, a while ago, I think like two months ago, uh, around like August, September, like this new trend started taking over Twitter by storm and not only Twitter, like any social media and I just saw nothing but Brazilian Miku everywhere. And she looked super cute and I'm like, oh, I want to draw Brazilian Miku, but then it kind of accelerated from there and it became every kind of Miku. And I was like, oh my god. And it just seemed really cool and I wasn't able to finish it till now and a lot of stuff happened, but don't worry, we're gonna go over all that. We're gonna go over how this trend started, uh, where it ended up, Brazilian Twitter's downfall and everything. So if you wanna hear about all of that, stick around. But before we get into the thick of it, if you like my content, please be sure to press the notification bell so that way you can get notified for any of my videos. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. And with that out of the way, let's go over the very interesting history of the Brazilian Miku trend. So, let's go over the basics really quickly. If you somehow ended up on my channel and you don't know what Hatsune Miku or Vocaloid is, first off, Godspeed. Vocaloid is a voice synthesizer people use to make music and other stuff like animations, etc. The MMDs that you see on YouTube sometimes. Uh, and they use phonetics provided by various voice actors, such as Sakiko Fuchita, who is the voice for Miku. And from there, thanks to some wonderful songs made from the community, years ago, Hatsune Miku and her friends became worldwide idol sensations. And now we can't escape her. The world is hers. <clears throat> Now on to the Brazilian Miku trend. From what I found, the first drawing I saw of Brazilian Miku was actually from June 24th, 2024 from the artist Aaron Artista. And it was shortly followed up by an animation by Akio on TikTok. So those are the first two instances that of Brazilian Miku uh, before the actual drawing that popped off on Twitter that started the whole trend wholesale. Uh, from Doodly on Twitter. And somehow this one drawing of Brazilian Miku just exploded. Just completely combusted. And suddenly Brazilian Miku was everywhere. You couldn't scroll down your feed without Miku popping up, but it didn't stop there. The Miku trend breached containment at some point and mutated, becoming worldwide. Swedish Miku, Belarusian Miku, Canadian Miku, Mexican Miku, Vietnamese Miku, Polish Miku, Miku Miku, ooh wee ooh. <coughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> I had to, I had to. But you get the point. Suddenly everyone was drawing Miku from various different countries and it was glorious! Until Twitter got banned from Brazil. <laughs> that happened. The irony is not past me. So apparently Elon Musty had beef with Brazil's Supreme Court judge Alejandra, Alejandra de Mores. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing this. I, I apologize. And he, he didn't really do some important stuff he should have done before a deadline, um, like appointing a representative for Twitter in Brazil and um, banning some users who the Brazilian Supreme Court judge really wanted him to ban because they were spreading misinformation. Uh, he didn't do it, but he, end up, he ended up doxing them. So like, good job, Musty. Like, what, what, what was the play here? But, 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 there is a happy ending to this tale. Despite the fact that Brazil got banned off of Twitter due to Elon Musk's fucking weirdness, you know, the cosmic irony, considering how the Brazilian Miku trend popped off right before this, I found out as of October 8th, 2024, two to three days after I finished my drawings, 
Uh, after paying a fine of five million dollars, Brazil is now unbanned from Twitter. <laughs> My timing is never this good, guys. My timing is never this good. I did not think that- I thought I was so past this trend. I was like, oh, this is gonna be like a month or two late. Right? This is gonna be a month or two late, I, I'm gonna post to a dead trend. You know, at least I posted after after Brazil was unbanned from Twitter, so you know, I can at least give myself that, right? I can at least give myself the fact that <laughs> my video will be out after Brazil has access to Twitter again. <laughs> I just- the cosmic irony of all of this is- is- it's so funny. But hey, at least I finally at last did the trend. Uh, and I'm super happy with it. Brazilian Miku is super cute to draw. I had a lot of fun testing out what kind of colors to do for her. I definitely wanted her... What's the word? I definitely wanted her to, to be a little sassy, you know? Be a little mischievous. Also, I had a lot of fun coloring these cans. I do not know why. But them cans turned out shiny. Like, you're gonna see in a second once I start adding all like the, the rendering and the shading. I, I tried to do a little bit more rendering than I usually do. I'm trying to make my drawings look more complete uh, by doing slight rendering to the skin and to some of the objects that the characters are interacting with. I'm trying to figure out what to do with the hair. I'm trying to learn more coloring techniques that I can do for the hair so that way it looks- it just looks better. I want to do more with my hair and stuff, you know? I want to make it shinier. I want to make it look more fluffy. I want it to have more texture. So, Brazilian Miki was definitely a kind of practice, so I got to try out a lot of different stuff with her, like the rendering for the gold bands and everything like that. Um, I got to, as well, render the cans. I tried some new stuff with her hair. You're gonna see that a little bit later. Uh, right now I'm laying down... After I did the flats, I'm laying down the uh, cell shading. So I'm figuring out which parts of the drawing that I want to put the shading on, so that way I can make everything else pop. Uh, which is why I put it on a chunk of her ponytail, on the left because it's going to be facing towards her so it's going to be kind of shadowed <coughs> it's also going to put more distinction between the fluff uh, from her bangs and the fluff on the ponytail so it doesn't blend together too much uh, so that's why i also added it so that way it can separate it from the bangs so it's not just one big ball of fluff i also really like the cute little gradient that i added to her hair i don't know why but lately i've been really enjoying adding gradients to hair I don't know, I think it just gives it like a nice like like color to it, like a nice sheen. I think what Brazilian Miku's hair reminds me of is like ocean water, which ironically, I, I think that's kind of fitting. <laughs> I think that's kind of fitting, actually. But yeah, honestly, she was super duper cute to do. I love seeing all the Brazilian Mikus. They still pop up to this day, by the way, even in October, uh, which is when I'm making this video. I just- I- Baxter. I still keep seeing Mikus everywhere, which is great. I love it. I want to see more. I want this trend to keep going. I don't want it to die because now I finally get to add to it. Um, but yeah, I also forgot for the rendering that I'm doing, I'm taking this ever so slightly darker color and I'm doing it to the edges of the clothes, the skin and stuff, just to give it kind of, um... A more completed look. But yeah, aside from that, I think she turned out super cute. I absolutely adore her. Those cran those cans are crispy. They look amazing, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with how she turned out, honestly. I'm super proud of her. But I still have two other Mikus to do, and these other Mikus... I got to do a lot, actually. But yeah, aside from that, I'm excited to talk about these next Mikus. So these next two Mikus are a bit closer to my heart because I decided to participate in the half of the trend that, you know, you make a Miku from either wherever you live or your ethnicity. 
So I decided to make two Mikus because Am I technically mixed? I don't know. I'm, I, I got two types of Hispanics in me, you know? One half Honduran and one half Puerto Rican. So I decided to make a Honduran and Puerto Rican Miku. So for these Mikus, I had to do a bit of research because I did grow up in the United States of, uh, you know, learning mainly English education and American history at a very early age. So I didn't really get to learn too much about these parts of my culture. Uh, my my mother did try to teach me some things, but I ended up mostly learning like the food part of the culture rather than like the actual, like what they did back where she came from. Uh, one of these days she wants, a, wants me to go over to Honduras. I might, I might not, I don't know. I'm terrified of flying. We'll see, one of these days. But I did look at a few things. I did some research in terms of the clothing they wear and uh, my mother did end up showing me like some stuff she used to wear when she was younger. Oh my God, they had a lot of poofy stuff. It's the dress she showed me had like shoulder pads and I'm like, huh, what? Now I didn't do the shoulder pads, but I did do a really cute dress that I saw in a lot of the reference images that I was looking at. Um, I saw all these colorful dresses, so I gathered that they like um, wearing lots of colors. So I ended up using that in my designs. So I did this big old poofy dress, lots of ruffles, very fun to twist around, dance in. Um, and I ended up planning like a pattern for it to add more color to it. But the base colors are gonna be the Honduran flag. So that's what I used for my two main colors. And then I did some warmer colors as accents. So I went with like red gold for the accent and then the main colors are blue and white. And a really cute thing that I saw in a lot of Honduran hairstyles, uh, they, first of all, there's a lot of flowers in the hair, which I always enjoy. But I also saw that um, they really like to put ribbons and stuff in their hair. And I really, really so badly wanted to put a ribbon in Miku's braids. And the reason I put braids for this Miku is because I just really like braids. My my mom knows how to do braids, so I would always ask her to put my hair in a braid before school in the morning. I just really like braids. Uh, now that I'm an adult, I don't know how to do it myself. So <laughs> eventually one of these days I will learn. But as of right now, every time I see my mother, I'm like, hey, Ma, could you, could you hook me up with a braid? You know, <laughs> so every time I see her, you know, she, she's always expecting me to ask her to put my hair into a braid. But yeah, so I, I kind of put some of that. So that was something growing up that I thought I could put in. I don't know if it's a Honduran thing or what, but I'm putting it in just in case, you know? Uh, another thing I, I really liked, I liked the little earrings that I saw. There's like a lot of like beads and stuff going on. I tried a new thing for the beads versus how Brazilian Miku was for the beads. For Brazilian Miku, I lined and drew all the beads. Now for Honduran Miku, since there was going to be a lot of them, instead I used a, um, a pearl brush that I had. I made the outline of the necklace and instead I just colored in the beads and you're gonna see a little bit later, I'm going to take that color and I'm gonna add um, a shading to it. I'm gonna add a brush to it and then I'm gonna use that shading to define the beads more and then I selected the whole thing with the wand tool and then I just had the, um, I used the outline option. So that way it looks like the beads each individually have lining but they don't. So it was a neat little technique that I thought it saved me a little bit of time, even though you could say coloring each individual bead took up more time. Potato, potato. At the end of the day, you know, it was, it, I got to test out a lot of different techniques and stuff, uh, especially for the, the ribbon and the braids. Oh my goodness. I, I spent forever. I think I spent an hour or two alone on the ribbons because I wanted them to look nice in the braid. And I just, for the life of me, I kept looking at reference image after reference image and I still couldn't understand how the ribbons were going through the braids. I think I eventually figured it out, 
in a in a nice way. I ended up tying off the bow like partway through the ribbon because I thought it would be cuter that way and it also wouldn't clash with the flowers if they were a little bit too high up. I, I spent so much time on those ribbons. I spent so much of my life on those ribbons. Oh my gosh. Um, and if you notice, Brazilian Miku ended up being more teal on the teal end of the Miku scale, but I, um, because I was using blue as my main color because of the Honduran flag colors, I ended up going more towards the blue side of the Miku scale in terms of uh, Miku hair canon for this Miku, just because I thought it would look better with the kind of blue that I was using because of the flag. Yeah. Aside from that, I think she turned out super cute. I can't wait to show my mother, and uh, we'll see if I was accurate in any of this. She'll she'll give the the final judgment on whether I I did this right or not. I will be devastated if she tells me, yeah, no, that's nothing. <laughs> that's nothing like what we wear in Hunters. I will be absolutely crushed. I was a little too embarrassed to ask her myself and be like, hey, hey, ma, could you could you look at this sketch? Because you know I don't want to show her an anime girl, and she's like, what what the fuck is this? You know, I was a little too embarrassed, so so we'll see how this goes. You know, I'll, I'll probably I'll probably put it in a community post or something. What what mother's judgment was, you know, be like, all right, guys, mother rated this this out of ten. But yeah. Aside from that, she is super cute. I actually really do adore her. Uh, she turned out a lot better than I anticipated. I was getting a little scared with the colors because I thought the red and the yellow wouldn't work too well. Uh, but in the end, honestly. I'm just really proud of how it turned out. I also, God, ruffles. Ruffles are hard. <laughs> I There's so many of them. There's so many of them. But at the end of the day, you know what? It was worth it. Honestly, I got to test out so many different things. And I still have a Miku left. So honestly, I've still got room to, to experiment and try other stuff because this is a whole different Miku. This Miku's full body because I, I, I don't know why I did that to myself. I don't know why, but that's just how it ended up being. But, honestly, I can't wait to show her off. But with that, Honduran Miku is pretty much done. And I can't wait to show you guys the next one. And now we're on to the final Miku. Now, just like I said for the previous one, uh, for Puerto Rican Miku, there was only like bits and pieces of stuff I could use from my childhood to put onto her. Um, just stuff that like I used to wear uh, when I was younger and things like that. Because again, grew up in an American school system and I didn't really see a lot of people, or at least like a lot of Hispanic kids my age until like maybe late middle school or early high school. So I didn't really have a lot, a lot to go off of. Um, I did look at some inspiration. I did find this really cute um, Miku design that I ended up um, being really inspired by. She just turned out super cute and I kind of wanted to do my own kind of twist with that kind of tropical sort of design. And I ended up going in another direction. I think the bangs still... I think the bangs ended up turning out the most like that reference image just because I thought they were super cute. Uh, but I ended up making them more swoopy. Because I like swoopy bangs. Uh, I did end up doing a little bit of some different stuff though. I did see a lot of the Hispanic Mikus with shorts and short shorts. Uh, I already drew Brazilian Miku with short shorts. So I thought instead I was gonna give Puerto Rican Miku jeans, but I really wanted them to have these little star cutouts because of the Puerto Rican flag on her kneecaps. So I ended up putting that in because I thought that would be really cute. I gave her a little guitar because when I was younger, I really wanted to play the guitar. Uh, don't ask me why, I don't remember. And um, we had an old guitar in the house I think it was like what my grandparents' guitar. Uh, and at some point, it, I was promised that guitar, but I never got it. So instead, I have a ukulele. So I'm living vicariously through this Miku because guitars are expensive. 
Yeah, I ended up making her hair real poofy uh, and putting those poofs into different balls of poofs with braids in it. I don't know why. I just thought it would look cute. It's kind of reminding me of the one magical Mirai Miku with like the the poof and then the, the, the circle, the ringlet in her hair and then the braid connected to the ringlet. It's kind of giving me that Miku. I, I don't know why. I just thought it would be cute and I didn't want to do the same hairstyle as the Miku from the uh, image that I found because that's not cool. You know, you got to do your own thing, right? I also ended up doing another ruffle shirt. I know, I already did a ruffle shirt on Hunter and Miku because her dress had the ruffles, but I just couldn't think of anything else because Puerto Rican fashion is more like summer fashion because uh, I used to live in Florida. And that's just the kind of stuff you see, because throughout the years, it's just, there's a lot of Hispanics now, so that's just the kind of stuff I see. You know? Like, all the ruffle shirts, crop tops, sometimes you'll see, like, a lady with, like, a bikini top and, like, a very loose jacket. Uh, or not even a jacket, like, a cover over that, like... I didn't want to straight up put on a bikini top, though. So instead, I did a cute little ruffle shirt. I wanted it to match the flag colors once again. And I put it- I put like a little bikini top underneath the ruffle shirt so she's ready to go to the beach if she wanted to. I just wanted her to look like she was ready to go to the water at any moment. And right now she's just enjoying a really nice jam sesh. Uh, I ended up keeping the bandana because the bandana was super cute and uh, I also really like wearing bandanas too. They're just- they're really nice. I don't know. They're just a nice fashion accessory. Now, for this Miku, aside from the other techniques that I did briefly mention with the other Mikus, I ended up not only giving her a full body, but I ended up also giving her a full background, too. And you'll see it. After I was playing around with all these colors, because I wanted to find out the hierarchy, I wanted to find out where I wanted all the colors because I didn't want her too blue because Honduran Miku was already pretty blue but I also wanted her to match the kind of general like color amounts from the flag itself so I, w I was playing around with her colors a lot specifically on her top uh, and at some point I found like a nice I found like a nice ratio that I wanted to keep but after that the background I don't know why I decided to do a background Honestly, I don't know why. I think I just looked at her and I was like, I don't want to leave her with a simple background like the others because she's it looks like she's sitting on something and I just really wanted to give her something, you know? I, I guess that's what it was. But that background was the bane of my existence for like a solid hour. I thoroughly was like, why did I do this to myself? Well, I know the answer now. The answer is because it made Miku look super cute. And in the end, honestly, it was a little worth it. So there's a little hot tip for you. If your brain says, hey, maybe you should do this thing. Make a new layer. Try it out. <laughs> Give it a try, you know. You never know. You never know what happens. Oh, I forgot to bring up briefly that for the guitar, uh, I found a 3D model from the Clip Studio Assets page and I used that 3D model for the guitar. I forgot to bring that up. Uh, there's a lot of good really- there's a lot of really good assets from the Clip Studio um, asset library that you can get to help you out because I- I just couldn't figure out how to properly draw the guitar. It always looked a little like- like a loppy potato, if you would. Yeah. Aside from that, you're about to see the background in a second, but aside from that, Miku uses the other techniques that I was playing with. I did a little bit of purple at the end of her hair. I don't remember why. I think it's because it, it like looked like a, more of a flowery color. And in terms of the Miku scale, I think she's in the middle between teal and blue. So she's kind of a good median between Honduran Miku and Brazilian Miku, which honestly, I'm fine with that. She turned out super cute. I just, I love... I was playing around with her eyes too. I just love how her eyes turned out. Um, especially with the background because I was really scared that she wouldn't blend into the background nicely. Uh, that's always a worry. I, I need to practice backgrounds more. It's, it's something I'm not really too strong at yet because I mainly just draw characters because I'm still trying to figure out anatomy and how to properly draw everything consistently. But you know what? I think I'm getting there a little bit. At some point, I'll be able to say, yep, this is it. This is my style. 
and one of these days we'll get there. And honestly, it'll probably be, co be because of Miku, and I just would not be surprised. Aside from that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you like my art, if you like my stuff, please consider liking, subscribing. It helps me out a lot, and I love reading you guys' comments if you guys leave any. Uh, I always try to reply to them as much as I can. Aside from that, I also have YouTube channel memberships that get you cute little emojis for my streams. They also get you behind the scenes access to special community posts and early access to my videos. And my Kofi also has some neat stuff on there as well as a free wallpaper because we unlocked it from stream. But aside from that, all of those benefits also get your name right at the end of my videos, just like this. One big, big thank you to my channel members, Kirsid, Kiwi Candy, Drywall Eater 9000, Elise Nguyen, P Flames, Ranma, Bread, Look It's Unknown, Cheddar Chess, and Isley. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. And another big, big thank you to my supporter on Kofi, Kirsid. Thank you guys so much for the support. It means the world to me. And yeah, thank you guys for enjoying my content, for watching the video, and I can't wait to see you guys for the next one. Sweet dreams, and bye bye